Today, on a very special run-of-the-mill episode, I talk about some of my favorite funny movies of all time, and I put a few on check. Welcome to Blazing Comedies. That's a working title on Guru Hub. Adam Sandler's been in approximately 6,000 films in his career, with 98.5% of those being terrible. Whether he's marrying Kevin James, and now I pronounce you Chuck and Larry, or arguing with a female version of himself, nothing really seems to click. And I realized that was a terrible pun, and I have no real qualifications to judge comedy. But if every asshole with a camera wasn't able to speak his or her mind, what would we be watching? N nothing. Hey man, do you wanna dance? Do you wanna dance? Biodome. What a piece of shit. I could have just as easily put Polly Shore's entire body of work on this list, much like Sandler in the five spot, but thankfully Shore stopped making movies. Biodome manages to be obnoxious in both the jokes department and from a filmmaking standpoint. Much like Carrot Top, it's a rare and deadly combination. I am so fat. Nobody likes me. People didn't like me in high school. Pluto Nash. What do you say about the movie that has absolutely nothing going for it? Eddie Murphy at one point or another was a comedic powerhouse, starring in hilarious films like Beverly Hills Cop, Coming to America, Trading Places, and many more classics. It's truly a testament to how bad this movie is, and Murphy's career was never the same, coming out with films like The Haunted Mansion, Norbit, Meet Dave, I'd rather not. 13 directors, 26 writers, Dozens of A-list talent and zero laughs make Movie 43 a failure on all fronts. I couldn't even finish this insult to humor, which speaks volumes, as I have very little going on in my life. Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer have crafted some of the least funny movies of all time. Disaster movie, epic movie, and date movie are so bad they had to put movie in the title to reassure the audience that they paid to go to an actual movie and not just stare at horse for two hours when in actuality that's exactly what they ended up doing Hannah Montana's dead goodbye my fans keep rocking and don't forget to buy my two new CDs in stores now thankfully humor can revolve around jokes that are more clever than hey remember Paris Hilton such as the ones on this list now Caddyshack is a Cinderella story with some of the greatest comedians from the 80s. Chevy Chase, Rodney Dangerfield, and the Murray brothers managed to balance their unique comedy styles off each other without it feeling like a tug of war for screen presence. Toss in a go for dancing to a Kenny Loggins jam on a golf course, and you have a damn fine comedy, my friends. <laughs> Speaking of golf, Happy Gilmore makes my number four spot. I don't like playing golf, watching golf, or really anything about golf, yet here we are with two of them on my list. Adam Sandler, as previously mentioned, almost always misses for me, but Billy Madison and Gilmore prove that at one time or another, he was damn funny. You want a piece of me? I don't want a piece of you. I want the whole thing. Oh! The Naked Gun is laugh out loud from beginning to end. And it's also my favorite in those set of parody films like Hot Shots, Airplane, Young Frankenstein, Spaceballs, and so on. And when asking my followers on Twitter, Joe Hill appears to have similar tastes as myself, tweeting out his favorites are Naked Gun, Airplane, and Wedding Crashers. For no matter how silly the idea of having a queen might be to us, as Americans we must be gracious and considerate hosts. Austin Powers' international man of mystery is Mike Myers at his best, playing both the title character and one of the best villains of all time, Dr. Evil. This film does a lot of things well. It plays off the James Bond tropes, it has fun with pop culture references, it gets a lavish dance sequence. This sort of thing is my bag, baby. Signed by Austin Powers. Yeah, baby, yeah! Dumb and Dumber for me is the most quotable movie of all time, with completely off-the-wall performances by Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. Drew sums it up nicely on Twitter. He didn't even tell me what the movie was that he loved. He just put a quote. Hey, guys. Oh, big gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. The odds of the prequel and a much later sequel living up to the quality of the first were about one in a million. So I'm saying there was a chance. Unfortunately, I was wrong, and the films ended up being about as lively and fun as Harry's dead parrot, Petey. 
I always just thought he was quiet. Today I propose something a bit more unconventional, rebooting the 1989 classic Uncle Buck as a TV series. We'll remind the audiences first and foremost that John Candy is dead by replacing him with an in-shape black man with zero of the charisma or personality traits of the original character. We're really hoping this show runs for about three, what's that? It's, it, it actually, that was a thing that happened and only went eight episodes, failed miserably. Wow, who could have saw that one coming? Who could have predicted that? Who want to see me jump off the balcony in the pool? Oh, damn. Thanks for watching. There's something about comedies. It's a working title. Let's end with some shake and bake. I got a message for all of them. Ready? Shake and bake. What does that do? Did that blow your mind? That just <laughs> happened.